Welcome to Let's Play Eador Masters of the Broken World Tips and Tricks for Starters. Well, first of all, it depends on the shard you start on. What I say now is well valid for nearly all shards except the Rust shard. The Rust shard is a little bit different. First thing you do is you look what special locations do you have. Necromancers, Brigands, Giant Spiders for example. This does not necessarily mean that these are weak targets just because they are on your starting province and that they are already known. There can also be trolls or augries or normally there stands giants in that case or Order of the Phoenix, Order of the Dragon, something like that. And brigands does not mean that these are a few brigands, it's just the type. So do not expect that one to be weak by normal circumstances. They can be everything. But if they're standing goblins, the chance is higher that you can beat them with a low-level hero. And if they're stand brigands, there's a chance that you can beat them with a low-level hero. And if they're stand trolls, well, a low-level hero has no reason to try that, except he has some very dirty tricks, which I will show later on. First thing you do is you look, do you have gold? Do you have gems? Is it enough or do you need urgently more? Because then our first priority is to get somewhere where there's much money around us. Let's buy a hero. On all normal shards our first hero to buy is the scout. Why? Because he's the cheapest ranged units available. The next ranged unit you can get is by building this building, which costs 180, and to construct that, you need a workshop that costs 60 gold. So this together is around 240, and you still have no uh, units bought, and the units cost about 80 gold as well. So, or 60, so that's not okay. And they cost wood, you have no wood in starting, so you will have to the, pay for the wood extra. So that's not an option to get a ranged fighter. The most cheap and um, the most sense-making way is the scout. Furthermore, he's very good at exploring countries, which you will need in the beginning. And he needs no, no equipment. He has his bow, he has his arrows, and that's good for starters. He does not need armor or anything fancy like that. And he works without spells. So we buy him first. On a world of rust, however, that does not work as his armor, as his arrows and bows deteriorate too fast. In that case, we will take a commander. Here, we'll take a scout. Yes, we pay that. So, first hero board. What will we do then? We will put one of these guys into the garrison. Why? Because then this garrison is defended. If there's no one in and the enemy attacks us, you've lost the game instantly. The other guy, we send away. He's of no use. Farmers or militia called uh, are not good fighters and even if you train them up to be the super farmer they can only beat up super potatoes but uh, no real targets. So then we go for exploration with this hero. So this hero we will explore the country. What is that good for? He will find treasures perhaps, he will find special locations and when this exploration rate hits 100 the people get happier and the income will rise. So always try to bring the provinces up to 100%. We have still money left. We'll need to buy an item, the, fir uh, the a building. The first building we buy is a tavern. Why that? Because a tavern is very, very cheap. And the tavern gives us access to barbarians. Barbarians are also very, very cheap and they need no resource. And that's the fact. In the beginning you have no resources. And for every resource you do not have, you will have to pay extra. You must keep your money together. We will need the money later on. So don't buy things that are too expensive. So, we will now be able to buy, for example, um, a mercenary. We do not buy mercenaries, except there are exceptional good, because they cost double the wage, the upkeep, than normal units. 
So we click next turn. We're done for the moment. Our, I'm playing this on a custom map just to show you. We examine everything and we try to remember. Skeletons, zombies, ghouls, sorcerers. No problem, no problem, big problem, very big problem. So, no attack. We're alone, by the way. This is second turn. In the second turn, we buy a barbarian's quarters, a barbarian camp. Why barbarians? Barbarians have several uh, positive effects. First of all, they are damned expensive, uh, damned inexpensive. They're just cheap. Second, they need no resources. Third, they are very, very hard hitting and they can take a punch if necessary. Most units deteriorate in their combat effectiveness when they are wounded. You see, if you pay take this ones when they are hit they defend um, not as good and they hit not as good and they do not do much damage others the barbarian the more you hit them the better they get so these are ideal starting units this bowmen are too expensive too um, expensive these guys here are not that expensive but they need gems for income uh, for upkeep and for building them for buying them and we must keep our gems together in the beginning. Later on we will have a hell of a lot of gems. But we do not need them at the moment. I have seen people playing with the watchmen for starters. The spear uh, excuse me, the spearmen for starters. Or the stone throwers. Well, spearmen are great if you're playing other games. Or if you are combining them with Bowmen, because they lower the enemy range defense, but only if the enemy gets close enough and only once per battle, then their spear is gone, and that's too many onlys. Barbarians do their job, whatever the terrain, whatever the enemy, they do their job, and that's the reason we keep them. So, now we buy us barbarians, three of them, you see, just inexpensive. And they are perfect, they do a lot of damage, they can take a punch, they can even throw something at the enemy. They're perfect. So now for starters, we can try to pick on the brigands or the necromancers, or we can look in the surroundings if there is something we want to beat up. For example, iron is always very, very good. The only problem is it will be very good defended. You can bet on that. The higher the number here is the village, for example, we have something, settled lands, there will not be that many normally. That's only an indicator, that's not a guarantee. So, we can try the settlement, for example. We try, we can load and save, we use this ability, so let's go there and have a look. So, we go there, four. Militiaman, Slinger, Spearman, that's okay. We can do that. So, what is there to know about combat? If the enemy has good ranged units, we place ourselves in woods, because then we get a defense bonus. If the enemy has strong melee units, we place ourselves on hills, because then we get a bonus in melee, a defense bonus. So, you see? You can click on it. Firing range, counter attack and defense are um, leveled up one. So, that's where we stay, that's where we go. Our barbarians try to keep on the hill. So, funny thing, we have hill moving for starters. That's quite unusual, but okay for us. Now, at whom do we shoot? This one is not dangerous. This one is not dangerous. This one is dangerous as long as he can throw his spear. So we fire at him. So. These guys are not doing that much, that much damage. So that's not our problem. So he throws his as well. He can throw something, so he will do so. 
and now we let them come barbarians can take a hit believe me there's no problem see as he's bounded he's not doing any more damage so he's not our problem so let's hit him let's hit him and let's finish him it's not always necessary to finish an enemy sometimes it's wiser to ignore an enemy that is already badly hurt because he can do no more real damage for example this guy here is not able to do any more real damage So why do we not attack him? Well, we can attack him because he will not be able to counter-strike. But if this were a spearman, for example, he had, that had counter-strike, we will throw our axe before he can do so. And off he goes. Perfect. They were higher in level than us and we have only got one bounded. And we have now, we have not access to horses. This is red. This means we have to fight the horses free. They are barbarians, but we got a province with plus 10, plus 1. So, we can build a new building at home. The next building we build is a library. Why? Because we can get our basic spells. So, we can look for the horses. How many barbarians are there? Let's have a look. Just have a look. Three. Barbarian Shaman. What does that mean? Well, normally two Barbarians, one Shaman. Other combination possible is two Shamans, one Barbarian. We don't have that luck. It will be one Shaman, two Barbarians. And we are a little bit tougher as we use Barbarians ourselves. You will know why in a second. So... This one is berserking now. The most important thing is when you've got a berserking barbarian, always kill him first. That is the most important thing about barbarians. It's not problem as long as they're not hurt. As l when the moment they're hurt, they're getting terrible. Well, he's trying to do his best, and so are we. Uh, now we must be very, very careful. Is he still doing... Yes, he's doing 5 damage, that's bad for us. I don't think we can win this, because now wherever we will go he will be there to kill someone so we take the hit and kill him and he will in return kill one of our barbarians but we got horses for that so let's accept that we get a level up now what to take archery is good but be honest this can be given to you by a normal item Precise shot, maybe not, but the ammo, that's not important for a hero. Uh, important for a hero is to give us abilities that the army normally do not have. For example, first strike by initiative and ranged defense. We take scouting for more exploration. This is a scout. The more exploration he has, the faster he will explore a province, the faster that we will get more money out of the province and the province will be happier. We'll take Berserking, we'll take life points. So we've got what we want from here. We go back and we can build another building. And let's look if we can build a school of sorcery. Yes, we can. About the schools, I recommend the following. First school to build, school of sorcery. Why? Best starting ritual, extravaganza. Makes people happy. Most important spell against high level targets or well second to third level targets web 
You can beat trolls with web. You can beat centaurs with web. You can beat orgies with web. You can beat executioners with web. This is one of the best spells available. Astral energy, very important for warriors, a must have for warriors. Warriors die if they get out of stamina. They will not die if they have this spell in the spell book. This spell, well, you can have. Second one I recommend strongly, the Altar of Chaos. The ritual is no use at all, but vulnerability, very important for commanders. A commander with a vulnerability spell is the best. He can cast that on an army and his own army can, well, shoot the enemy to shreds as this reduces every resistance and defense ranged or melee by three. Very important. Second, burn ammo. Enemy bowmen, enemy sorcerers, enemy spellcasters, yes, spellcasting also calls as ammo, is reduced by this and the enemy is getting damaged by the way. And you get an imp. Another unit on the battlefield, an expendable unit on the battlefield, then can cast, that can fly. Perfect. Second one. Third one. Necromancy. Why? Making dead enemies into undead friends is simply astonishing. The enemy is confused with the new unit in his own ranks that is fighting him. He is prolonged. He is must take time and he's distracted very very good and the zombie can take a hit and if he dies he was good for nothing he won't, won't survive the battle anyway and fear most underestimated spell ever if you fight augries and you have four fear spells you win because you can fear the augury into oblivion he will have one moral at the end, he will not be able to do much damage and most of the time he will be running away. Unbelievable good. You can only beat, be, um, build four of these schools, so it's up to you what you take for the fourth. The magic arrow is nice, but only interesting if you are a mage type. The healing is good and is nice, but, well, it's not a must-have. This Farwind is very important from time to time because when you have to defend your home, Farwind is the ritual that gets you back home. So, we build that one. And then we get our asses back. And move it! So, now, we can buy a new unit. Our barbarian died, so is life. We can repair our gear, as we always do. We can learn spells. We are very low on gems, so we learn these spells because they are not very expensive. They cost nothing in the battle. No gems, you can cast them as often as you, as you like, and they are quite good. This one is, well, can be effective. It's not my favorite. This one is a must to have in an enemy if you have a commander or if you're fighting sorcerers because this is the only spell in the beginning that can rise your moral again. If you lose moral in the battle, it stays with the army. The moral does not go up except you beat someone in melee. So that's can that can be very important to have that with you. We will take that one with us. No, we will take what we take. We take that. Put that away. So. We stay at home. And we attack. Well, Necronancer can be terrible because we expect them. Well, let's, let's have a try. Let's have a look. Five. What? Skeleton, zombie, ghoul, sorcerer. So expect two skeletons, one zombie, one ghoul and one sorcerer. We're not able to beat them up. So, in this reason, it's no shame to load. You will simply have to do that from time to time. Live with it. In the old game, it was 
the ability, the special ability of this deity that we play, that we can jump back in time. We bought a scout, as he is the cheapest bowman. We have bought barbarians, as they are the best melee troops in the beginning. And we have built a library for spells and then a school of... What is it called? Help me. Sorcery, because of the web spell. So, we cannot... Damn it. I did it again. I'm a moron. Well. Since this is for starters. No, no, we do it right. We'll do it right. This is a learning let's play, so we learn from our mistakes. I have no problem loading two times, if it's necessary. Our goal is now to get start to train him. What we take for second hero, we'll see on the items we have until that time. If we have very good items, we take a warrior. Why? A warrior levels up fast and is able to clear normal provinces by himself without any help. So, let's see what we have there. The iron would come in handy if it's not too well defended. No, it's not. At least it's not the province. If we have no items that are useful to us, our choice will be a commander. A commander is good no matter what items you use. That's the good thing on a commander. So... Is this a hill too? Yes. So let's use the hill. Yes. The good thing is the hill sl slows them down. So... He will be now able to attack us, but these uh, farmers are not very strong. They're not our problem, normally. And I'm standing on a hill, so my defense will be fairly high. So... You see, one damage. That can be ignored. So, we do our best to get rid of him now. He's still living, so we throw something at him. We totally ignore that guy because he will take some time to get through us. And by the time he gets to us, he has other problems. So, one, two, hit. Are we out of ammunition? No, we're not. Why we cannot shoot him? Oh, we're out of points. So, shoot that guy. Throw that thing. Move there. Hit him. Move there. Hit him. And we're perfect. We got money. We got perhaps access to iron. And we get an arena. Well, arena fighting has gone a little bit more challenging since the change from Eador Masters, uh, Eador Genesis to Eador Masters of Magic. It can still be done. It was easier last time. So, can we build anything? Next thing we build is an altar. Why? Not because of this resurrection, whatever. We don't care for that. Because we want to be ready to buy our self a healer. That's the next unit we need. So, let's go to next turn and see what kind of orcs we're up against. Four orcs and goblins, that can be done. So, we use the terrain to our advantage and we shoot on the orcs. Why do we shoot on the orcs? Because the orcs are slow and the orcs are dangerous. Orcs are dangerous people. 
That's simply a fact. So... Let's hope we can kill him. Yay! Goblins can do a hell of a damage, that's that. But we'll have to live with that. So, is he a force marcher? No, he's not. Always beware of orcs that are force marchers. Why? Because they can travel two spaces and hit you quite terribly. So let's get rid of that orc. So he's done too. Yay! We get another level, level up. We will not take marksmanship. It's not his mission to shoot like a hero. It's his order to support an army. These are heroes. These are your army commanders. So, we take more exploration. We take the life points because our units must survive if we want them to level up. And we go back home. And can we buy something at the moment? I don't think so, to be honest. The healers are at 100 gold, so we better keep our money together. We can do a little extravaganza now. It has a cooldown. So use it first and ask questions later. Use it again, so now just use it. So we repair our gear. Always do that. Never forget that. That's very important. And we'll take down the brigands. At least we try. It depends on how many are there. Five. Brigand thief moment. That could be too much. Five is quite a lot. And we're hurt. And the terrain is not to my full satisfaction. He is already shooting at us, that's not good. But at least... Always beware of the thieves. The thieves may not look like killers, but they are. They really are. So... We must get rid of that one. We got that one killed. Now is the question, can we do anything against that one? No. He will reach us no matter what we do. But he attacks the f a wrong target. How many shots does he has left? Four. Oh, that's not, that's not too few. So, I think we'll have to deal with that fellow. So, we have no one, nowhere to run. We can try to get him, but he will be killed by the magic missiles before we reach him. And done. Very good.
a bow. Damn thing is, we already have that kind of bow, but we got money for it. Good so far, and now we will build a very important building, that one. This is the next I, and the next most important building we built. Why? Healers do not only heal in battle, they heal between turns. They heal your whole army. So they keep you running. They keep you working. They enable you to make one attack after the other. Therefore level up faster, get better items faster, get more provinces faster. That's how you can be faster than the enemy, than the computer, for example. We repair our gear, we always do that. Now, we see that two of our barbarians are very badly hurt. We put them into the garrison, because they heal there faster, and then we explore for one round. Find a mage tower. Seven. Whoa. No, we cannot. We can talk to them, for example, to get a quest. Um, sometimes that is useful. We can try it now. They want a scroll of... What scroll do they want? Schumann Devil. That's a quite high level uh, quest. But, okay. Let's see how our units are. Uh, wrong button. They already healed a bit, but not enough. So, one more turn. A silver mine, four orcs and goblins. Do you know what? We retreat, but... Okay. We do not have the money to make them happy. So... That was not that good. I will not reload now, but you might think of reloading if you get such a bad experience, such a bad uh, special event. What we will do now, we will buy one of that, put them back, and try to beat the crap out of the orcs. So silver mine because we'll need the extra income and plot and then we can take the third barbarians with us and that's quite a powerful combination so We start shooting, and for more important, we start healing. If we are lucky, the orcs will move first and block most of the way. This will make the target slow down. Remember, the healing does not work unlimited. They use slots like shooting. So he can only heal two more times. Later on, you will get a special ability that allows you to regain healing. So, we heal him up. I'm pretty sure that he will try to attack our main hero. That's what I would do. Yes, and he did. Did. But we're okay. Yes, our hero is also decreasing in combat strength, in shooting strength, strength, if he's hit. But it's not that terrible. Well, we can try that. The question is, is, is it wise? Well, damn it, we hit him. Better hit him first than hit him last. So, 
knock him over. We have beaten them all. Uh, we take in this kind the moral because even barbarians get bonuses from high moral and barbarians can be feared. They're normally immune to fear, but there are magical effects that can, that can send uh, lower their moral so low that they can be feared. Yes, this is good. It costs more money, but he has more ammo and he's healing more, and that's most important for a healer. Oh, that's not good. Another negative event. Okay, we repair our gear. And is there anything more we can do, giant spiders? We cannot take up, so we do some exploration. We will level up soon, and with a little luck, we will get one more. A ruined tower for orcs and goblins. Oh, we already know that we can do that. So. And by the way, we should make ourselves ready. We should make ourselves ready to buy a second hero. So, they're all coming quite nicely. We will now be moving a little bit away so that he does not get first hit. And then we're going to beat the crap out of the goblin. And we get ready to heal our guys. Oh, that was not very nice of you. You little evil bad sucker, you. But we heal ourselves. We beat the crap out of him. Um, no, no, no. Is he still doing damage? Yes, he is. He will not be able to reach us, so it's quite safe to shoot at him. He's not a force marcher. No, he's not. So, as you see, no problem here. We move there. He moves here. And he moves there to heal him. Always try to heal your units before you end the combat. That's important. You see, done. And we get command. Very, very good. And we get another level in scouting. This can prove very useful, this poison water. Take that. We take the money. We're happy with the money. And we will repair our gear. Never forget that. And we will take our barbarian with us. And we'll explore one more. We have no reason to buy a building at the moment. Why should we? We concentrate ourselves in finding money. Yes, we can make money with the provinces if we build the right buildings. They cost a hell lot of money. And we'll have that later on. At the moment, we need to explore. At the moment, that's the main priority. The people here are here very, very unhappy. A second extravaganza here. We're attacked! Oh no! So... What is there? An enemy bowman? Well, nothing we cannot handle, I say. Nothing we cannot handle. We could now um, poison them, but poisoning them costs money, and we do not have that money. And now you see the reason why even a ranged fighter has magic spells with them. Because they have an unlimited reach. So always kill that guy first. He's very, very ugly. So, you move here, you move here, then we'll let him come. So, let's hope we can kill him. Yes, we can. We go here, we go here, we go there, and then we beat the crap out of him. 
and we go into position with our healer. He will no question attack him. So now let's see. First of all, we shoot them. Then we move, we move, we move. We kill him, we attack him, we attack him. Very good. And now before we make net we kill him, we heal ourselves. And we let our hero kill him because we need the experience. Every unit our our hero kills will give him experience. That's the reason why commanders are not leveling up. As they cannot fight, as they cannot shoot, and as, as they cannot cast very well, they are very rarely killing enemies, and so they are not leveling up. And as the experience is distributed be be between the units in the end of the combat, you get a bonus and that's distributed between your units, and a commander has more units than a scout, the commander units does not do not level as fast. So... We did well here, we find a head, excellent. And we keep, oh, we have 700 gold. That is enough for a hero, the problem is we do not have the gems. The gems. So, we need gems, where do we find gems? Necromancers have them, ancient crypts have them. But we're not able to knock them over the head, are we? We could try, but I don't think we're able to do so. But well, let's try. Sometimes you get lucky. So, most important enemy unit... The Sorcerer. We must beware the Sorcerer. He can do a lot of nasty things to us. Now, these guys are immune to poison. <laughs> so poisoning them will not be very useful. These guys are immune to stunima, so it will not be very useful to attack them with stunima, deleting spells. What we do is, we shoot at the sorcerer and try to kill the sorcerer before he reaches our lines. This will be a hard task. He will be there within the next round. Yes, now he's in range. And this unit here is very, very dangerous. We should have learned web, because with web, this unit is not that dangerous. So now is the question what to do. So, let them come. Oh, that really hurt. There's no other way to say that. We move a little bit forward and shoot at him. We move here and try to heal ourselves. We move there. We can throw something at him, but believe me, this one is terrible. So... We have hill movement, so we can move up here and shoot him. He can heal him. And he can move there and finish him. Now the problem is he has nowhere to run. We can move there, but this will not help. I blew it. He will be able to attack him no matter what we do. So we can try to attack him, but then he will poison us with his disease. And as his attack is not deteriorating when he's hit, that is no use for us. 
So we're now getting damage every turn. We can throw at him. But the main problem is he is diseased now too. And we will lose a lot of life points by this disease. And our attack also deteriorates. Oops, I forgot something. Well, I hope we can still do it. We cannot heal anymore. So now it counts. Uh, what am I doing exactly? This was dumped even by my standards. Okay, now I lose a unit because of my missing intellect. Well, I deserve that. We get another command. What we take now? Pathfinding. Why? We always take pathfinding if we can because this works on the complete army. This gives us mobility on the battlefield. This gives us the ability to choose where we fight and who strikes first. This is one of the most important abilities a hero can have, a scout can have. So we take the attack, we take meditation as our healer can regain his med uh, healing ability with that. And we take the life points, a guard contract, this can prove useful later on, and gauntlets. Well, we have no use for that at the moment. So, we buy units, two more barbarians. We repair our gear. And, well, the rest, we don't, don't think we can beat them up. Giant spiders, well, even three giant spiders could be too strong for us. So we explore one. Oh, no, no, oh, no. What, what, have, I, what have I? A ruined tower, three gargoyles. No, they're too strong. So, now we can buy a second hero. Normally I would take a commander, but for starters I want to show you the warrior. Normally commander. So, let's have a look at our commander. He has a good attack, he has a good counter attack, he has a miserable defense, and that's the reason he dies most of the time. Troops are not that helpful with him. He best fights alone. As we have iron, we can buy a building that might support him a little bit, and that is a forge. It's not that expensive, and it gives us access to, well, at least a little bit armor. So, he has a special ability, athletics, that is not the most useful to start with, but it is okay. So, our hero can give his uni uh, his items to him. They might come in handy. Our hero will keep exploring and he will equip what he has. So, now he has some more life points. What he now needs is spells. With these spells, he will not be very good, but that might help. So. One more turn. Oh, you keep exploring for the moment. When you explore, you get exp exploring also helps a little bit. One vampire. No, don't mess with vampires. Five Brigadier Thief Bowmans. He has no chance without proper armor, believe me. So, what we now need is... How unhappy are they? In 27 rounds they will start a rebellion. That's not good, but that means at the moment that's our not our top priority. 
we need a building for our oh, we cannot build it that's sad because with imps he would be a little bit more powerful so for starters he will get himself a ranged attack Well, he will not be able to take anyone down, but let's try. So, and you will take down the brigands in hope to find an armor. As I said, it's not the most important thing to conquer many provinces in the beginning. Think of what you need, money and gems and you find them more often in special locations than by conquering provinces. Provinces give you a steady income that's very important later on when you have to pay an army but in the beginning your army is not that big. We're doing a little bit negative at the moment but only a little bit that's not our primary problem at the moment. So I think I end the let's play here the tutorial the tips and tricks and if you want to see more if you want to have if you have special questions how is something done tell me a trick just say i'll do my very best to show you until then bye <laughs>